Welcome to this iteration of Immersive 360 Tarot brought to you by iImagination. Today is a bonus session. This isn't going to be pick a card. We're going to try something a little different. We're going to um, do kind of a channeling of messages or embodiment of cards that come out to give messages based on whatever situation you're here to um, get wisdom about. So if you didn't come with any uh, thing in mind, I encourage you to take some time to sit and think about that. And then while you do that, I will go through uh, some notes. First, I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the, the Sitsika, Pikani, and Kenai, the Tsutina Nations, Yarhe Nakoda and Region 3 Métis Nation of Alberta. This is Treaty 7 territory. We are in what is known as Banff National Park. We are atop of the Sacred Guardian Sleeping Buffalo Mountain. Behind me is Rundle Mountain. A very nice view in between these trees here. We are sitting in a lovely forest. You can hear birds chirping. <coughs> So definitely sit and enjoy this environment. I encourage you, if you have VR headset, to put on your headset, if you haven't already, uh, to fully immerse yourself in this experience. If you don't have a headset, you can be watching this video on your mobile phone and look 360 in direction, or you can watch it on your desktop, click and drag in direction, or you could just leave it 2D with this fabulous view and watch it that way. So, uh, I want to also say that I consider myself to be an R-rated reader, which means the messages that can come out can uh, be dark, be deep, be heavy, be sexual in nature, not always, but that those things do come up and that I will talk about them. I don't censor myself and it's very likely that I'll swear. So if any of those things offend your sensibilities, this is your opportunity to switch away from this video right now. If you're deciding to stay on, please know that this is a general reading experience. It's going to be for many people who watch it. Um, take the messages that resonate, leave the ones that do not. This is going to be a different experience, as I mentioned, than what I normally do. So take some moment right now and develop a question in your mind on what you want to receive guidance um, about. I'll give you a few minutes and then we'll do some intuitive embodiment of cards and get some some messages, eh? Let's get started. So, first message in regards to your question. The Knight of Cups reversed. So, fear of feeling is a huge factor. It's because of desiring to protect yourself you've been hurt before, you don't want to be forthcoming or outright with your feelings. You want to wait until someone else is vulnerable before you expose your underbelly to them too. It is important to understand how our emotions drive us. Are we doing things out of emotional fear or emotional fullness? Right now, there is a sense of drain. What else? Get the back. The sun reversed. I had expectations that 
things would be perfect, but they're not. And that in itself causes the dilemma because there is no perfection. And so I keep having this dream of that something has to be or look or feel a certain way for me to be happy, but that just delays my happiness rather than understanding and accepting and embracing the imperfections as being perfect, if you will, and allowing my happiness to exist despite them, in spite of them, alongside of them. Can I look around here and see all the things that could be flawed or can I see all the things that are also beautiful? Do I choose to enjoy and see the bright side? The Emperor reversed. Because things are not perfect and that I struggle with that, I want to exert my will. I want to make things be the way that I want them to be. There's a limiting view of only my perspective. One view to rule it all, shall we say. If I exert my force onto others, if I hold strong, if I'm top dog, then I can't be hurt. And at least that can bring me some happiness because I'm not feeling sadness. Father of Pentacles, it is important for me to be comfortable, <clears throat> to be luxurious in whatever way that looks like for me. I want to eat well, drink well, to have objects and things that are important to me, that add to my bliss. What I do need to understand is that I also need to provide for others. I need to give of myself as equally as I give to me. And that I need to give based on listening to them, giving them what they need, not what I think that they need. So listening is an important skill set. Being able to see the other perspectives, the other perceptions beyond one's own. The chariot. It is essential to move forward. It is essential to grow out of these experiences. To know that they will always be a part of us, that they will shape us, that our fears are totally legit on being emotionally vulnerable, physically vulnerable, materialistically vulnerable, etc. But that also taking the time to just see what the underlying motivation is, meaning, am I doing this because of fear, because of lack, because of anger, or am I doing this because I'm excited, or I'm hopeful, or I'm grateful, or I'm passionate. If you're doing the ones out of stuff that are positive energies, those are the things that drive you forward, that move forward. So in relation to whatever it is that you're asking about, in your decision making, it's important to listen to others that are involved if they're essential in this decision or in these choices, to be able to give to others what they need as well as to honor and give to yourself to be able to reflect on your motivations as to why you're doing what you're doing and to choose things from a positive motivation. If you notice yourself being in a negative motivation, for example, being afraid of being vulnerable because you don't want to be hurt, that's okay. Acknowledge that, honor that, but then realize that that limits you and that holds you back. So then you can make the conscious decision to actively shift that energy. Knight of Pentacles. 
This is a work that will continue throughout your life. This isn't just, I'm going to solve this issue now. The messages that are being given right now are larger than the topic you're asking about. These messages are for life development, life practice. They can be applied unilaterally to any situation that you're going to be having come up. What else? Waiting is precious. For some it may feel frustrating. It may feel stuck in molasses. But waiting is in itself the right time. There are times of pause, there are times of rest, there are times of action. There are times when things need to align. So patience is important and actively working whilst waiting and practicing and cultivating these energies, making space for things to move forward. Almost like, like when company comes over to the house, you know? And what I mean by that is, if you know that someone is coming over to the house, but you're waiting for them to arrive, you can be preparing the house to welcome and receive them, right? Now, that doesn't mean that every time you need to be like cleaning the house and make sure it's perfect, but that could be something that you like to do is to make sure it's a welcoming environment. But it's the fact that you know something is coming and you can actively work in the waiting time to be able to make space to welcome it in a healthy and positive manner. The Hierophant reversed. In this situation, and probably in all going forward, challenge the status quo. Ask yourself if it's because of conditioning by society, or by your religious upbringing, or by your family environment upbringing. And it's okay to keep the things that serve you best from these experiences of external influences, but also <clears throat> it is encouraged to be your own self. And if that walks away from what is considered a societal norm, do it. Because we all create our own paths and all of these paths are the right path. All of expression is positive and wonderful expression ultimately. That sounds a bit conflicting, but in my understanding philosophically, <clears throat> losing voice here, is that ultimately everything that we are experiencing is to ultimately just experience it, to know it, to feel it, to be it, to live it. We are embodied. So go against the grain, challenge the authority, ask questions, and reflect on yourself what you want to do. Do you want to, you know, in your mid-30s decide to be a witch like I have? Do it, even though lots of people would tell you that's probably some crazy shit. Ten of Pentacles reversed. I see this as legacies can be what you make them, but don't get hang up on the end result, the product, the final piece. It is the journey, it is the everyday, it is the step-by-step -step in the making that both teaches you and that you can share with others, that builds over time to create the culmination of your life experience, which is your legacy. So it's not about delaying till later when I have this done, when this is achieved. It is now, it is every moment. Every moment is your legacy. What are you doing? What are you choosing? Let's get one more.
six of wands. It is not necessary to perfectly enact the advice that's given in this reading. But attempting and listening and reflecting and chewing on can help bring about success, victory. And it gives you the power to be able to choose for yourself, standing in personal empowerment, personal confidence, etc. To make decisions, to move forward, to practice in the in the um, space in between, in the waiting times, etc. Um, all of those decisions are what make up what feels like success. Success, like the Ten of Pentacles, can be in every moment, in just getting up and brushing your teeth, in just having a smile. It can also be in completion of projects, but again, never delay it. And also know that you will be successful in everything that you do, even the failures, the things that go wrong, are successes because they teach you how to continue onwards, how to change, how to shift. Every lesson, every failure is a success. And shift that mindset into success thinking and that will radiate outwards from you and everyone around you will be able to see it. So everyone, that was an experience, channeled messages, definitely. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. I hope you enjoyed this bonus immersive uh, 360 tarot session. Please feel free to sit in this environment while I pack up my cards and then uh, I will end this session and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.